Hello everyone. In this video, I hope to offer some unsolicited advice to Sri Rahul Gandhi. Uh, I do so publicly because these thoughts, I believe, are of wider application and therefore all my fellow wayfarers along the pilgrim path of thinking rationally, impartially, objectively, in light of national realities, will be interested, I hope, in these thoughts. And if you happen to bump into Rahul Gandhi, please share these thoughts with him. Uh, now, I'm quite convinced that Rahul is very sincere and very keen in his mission to restore India to the demo democratic culture, democratic way of life, as well as to reinforce the beleaguered secular uh, character of India. <clears throat> Uh, he is very sincere in his statement that what he is engaged in is a conflict in ideology between the pluralist, secular, inclusive, democratic culture that he wants to sponsor and the ideology of the RSS of the Sangh Parivar, about which he has his own notions, whether or not I endorse those notions. Um, I need not uh, uh, mention at this point in time because that's not uh, the focal point of this presentation. Uh, it's not what I think that matters, it's what Rahul thinks that matters. And I'm sharing these thoughts with Rahul uh, because I'm encouraged by the fact that um, his credibility and stature as a political leader of substance is now firmly established. Uh, the BJP has very wisely abandoned its uh, hobby horse of ridiculing Rahul uh, after its own fashion. Uh, it has now realized that uh, it will be counterproductive and the credit must go, as I have already said in an earlier video, to Rahul in the mature way and I would say spiritually uh, uh, robust way in which he handled that rather difficult situation. Then what is it that I want to say by way of advice to Sri Rahul Gandhi? Uh, Rahul, if you are really sincere about making a difference in the political destiny of India, please consider the following. I sincerely believe that the Gandhian heritage which the Congress Party abandoned a long time ago which actually explains the decline of the party and the loss of its uh, uh, affective uh, and uh, um, emotional place in the hearts of uh, the uh, millions of Indians who responded so beautifully and spontaneously to the call of Gandhi. Um, so the decline of the International Congress started when it began to dilute and subsequently uh, jettison that Gandhian legacy. So obviously, what I am going to say will have uh, a bearing on this. I'll, uh, I may even uh, provide some larger context to this. So I believe that uh, the Gandhian heritage, the, the Gandhian spirit, the Gandhian vision for India, which the Congress Party compromised, is now waking up through Rahul Gandhi. This is my sincere conviction and I have not seen anything in recent times to shake that uh, belief of mine. So this is uh, the given on which I am going to build my thoughts. If Rahul is to be the inheritor of the Gandhian legacy and, and if he is to articulate that legacy in a manner that would heal and strengthen the Indian democracy and secure the future of India, 
then he need to prepare himself for this. Uh, in this context, in order to uh, make matters clear, let me take help from a Greek myth, the myth of clearing the Augean stable, which is what uh, the Congress party has become. And in fact, I would say this is what even India as a, as a country has become. I say this because I believe in the huge and exciting potential of India, uh, not even 10% of which has been realized. So the non-fulfillment of the native genius of a country to me is um, uh, a tantamount to defiling the soul of that country. And the soul of a country is, not, uh, is defiled not only when, um, um, you know, corruption, uh, malfeasance, um, violence, destruction are all heaped on the country. It's also defiled and fouled when its potential is mocked and no orchestrated attempt or systematic attempt is made to fully utilize the potential that the people hold. In that sense, uh, India has been decaying over a period of time. And uh, this is the agenda that uh, Rahul Gandhi needs to address. Now, the story from Greek mythology I have in mind is that of Hercules cleaning the Augean stable. Sometimes it's also pronounced as Aegean stable, but I prefer to call it, uh, or pronounce it as Augean stables. Uh, the story um, uh, goes that King Augeas had a large number of cows, about thousands of them, and he used to keep them in stables. But unfortunately, there was no provision for cleaning these stables uh, 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 daily. Uh, uh, therefore, mountainous filth accumulated. And it reached a stage where nobody could actually even think of cleaning it. So it remained like that, uh, polluting the whole atmosphere. So Hercules was assigned the task of cleaning the Augean stables. And he resorted to the technique or the technology that was available at that time, which nobody else thought of, but he did. He redirected the courses of two rivers that made them pass through these stables. And at once, this, uh, this uh, a mighty uh, flow of water washed away this mountainous accumulation of filth leaving the stables spotlessly clean. That is the story. Now, it's interesting for me that um, uh, Hercules, A, used two rivers, B, um, resorted to existing resources, resources that were already available, but about which nobody else thought. Therefore, the interesting insight to begin with in this story is that the resources that you need actually to clean up the place, to make a difference, to improve the situation, all these resources are already available. The thing to do is to connect the right resources to the required uh, goal. Uh, it is not that you have to import resources from overseas or from a distant planet. The resources required for accomplishing the goal are already available. The tragedy is, or the misfortune of the country is, that there is no match or there is no connection between needs and resources. For example, India has immense spiritual resources, spiritual and ethical resources. That resource is remaining untapped. But filth is accumulating in our national psyche in our public life, in our personal and interpersonal relationships, in every aspect of life, filth is accumulating. And particularly, certainly in the political domain. And everybody agrees that but for rampant corruption, India would have been five times richer in the last 75 years. So no one can dispute in the name of uh, uh, patriotism. No one can dispute the fact that there is filth in our national life. Though I know it's politically impolite to talk about it, we need to confront reality if we are to make a headway, make any headway. 
So, on the one hand, we have immense spiritual and ethical resources, which are native to us, that are already present, already available, remaining untapped. On the other hand, there is a crying, urgent national need. We need cleanliness and hygiene in our public life, in our social life, in our personal life. The problem is that there is no connection between the two. So needs exist in a watertight compartment, resources exist, resources exist in another, another watertight compartment. What Rahul needs to do is to connect the two, just like Hercules did. That's the first thing I have to do. For this, Rahul needs to understand very clearly and patiently what these resources are. I think it's a fairly accurate and adequate understanding of the nature of the filth that is suffocating our national life. That's the impression I have. So, what he now needs to do is to focus, uh, as Gandhi did, and understand as clearly as possible the immense power, the spiritual, ethical power that's already available. It is there that I would uh, advise him to read Gandhi's uh, autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truths, uh, as well as uh, the other writings. Unfortunately, the Rahul Gandhi, I know, is a very good reader. Uh, he's keen to understand, and that's the reason why it's worthwhile for me to share some of these thoughts. So he has to understand the available existing resources which can be used redemptively in relation to national life. Uh, and like Gandhi did, work out a program of action which will serve as the bridge between the need and the resource. Gandhi in person tried to do that, but beyond that he also evolved a series of strategies. Now one thing that we must learn from, one thing that Rahul Gandhi needs to learn from Gandhi, and therefore all young people also must learn from Gandhi is, that if you have a clear sense of purpose, you must also develop strategies commensurate with the purpose, because without strategies, you, you may have all the good intentions in the world, but you will not achieve anything. So Rahul has all the good intentions, but I'm, I'm afraid he does not have adequate strategies. That's where the problem lies. And given his uh, sincere, keen, good intentions, I have every reason to believe that in quick time, he'll make up for this lacuna and uh, claim the Gandhian uh, heritage in its fullness. Now, a word about the two reverse, reverse that uh, Ga uh, Rahul Gandhi can think of, and I'll close this video on that. Um, certainly, one of the two reverse that he can bank on is the Gandhian thought, the Gandhian heritage, the Gandhian uh, um, political acumen, the saintly politician that Gandhiji was. And that will strike a beautiful contrast with Sri Narendra Modi, who is the pragmatist politician par excellence. You can't possibly beat Sri Narendra Modi in his own game of pragmatic politics, where Ethical uh, idealism or spiritual uh, norms will not hold him back. That's why it's nowhere in his conscience, conscience that he made a promise that all Indians will be richer by 15 lakh rupees if he's voted to power and completely forgot about it and later on could say that it was just a joke. That's pragmatism at its very best. That's a, that's a paradigm from within which he has chosen to operate and you have to give it to him. I, not that I agree with it, but if you choose to be a pragmatic politician, that's what you will do. Obviously, Rahul Gandhi is not cut out for it. It will be disastrous for him to imitate Sri Narendra Modi in this respect. And fortunately for all of us, there is no indication that he wants to imitate Sri Narendra Modi. Then what should he be? He should be a Gandhian and that is what, uh, that is what he's uh, cut out for. In which case, he has to evolve appropriate strategies and those strategies will not have easy shortcuts. In fact, one important aspect of Gandhian vision, Gandhian political culture and Gandhian strategies is the renunciation of shortcuts, no easy ways. And this, this is a temptation that Rahul would face as a politician if he is to have a long and uh, beneficial innings in the political 
history of India. He has to be like Gandhi in this respect that he does not wish to have recourse to shortcuts, number one. The second thing I want to suggest, but the second river as a resource available to uh, Rahul Gandhi is the power of the people. After all, that too is an important aspect of the Gandhian heritage. The transformation of the Congress party attained under the leadership of Gandhi, especially after 1915-1917, that period, is that while Congress remained as an elite, elitist party, largely dominated by the Brahmins for the first uh, several decades after it was founded by Hume, Gandhi revolutionized or rather revitalized the Congress party by making it a genuine people's movement. And he was the first politician to have brought women's power into the political landscape. Um, so while Narendra Modi banks almost entirely on the money power of the corporates, though he also showcases himself as a demagogue, a great orator, uh, someone who has a heart for the poor, so on and so forth. Basically, he draws all his strength from the corporate giants of the country whom he uh, helps uh, in astronomical ways, the exact details of which are withheld from public knowledge. So Modi, Modi's attempts to present himself as, a, as the leader of the people, he may be the leader of the masses, we must make a very important distinction between being the leader of the a leader of the masses and a leader of the people. Rahul must become the leader of the people, whereas Narendra Modi will become and has already become the leader of the masses. So I would see the Indian political scenario in the days ahead as a, a tension, a fight, if you like, a contestation if you want a more pedantic word, between the leader of the people and the leader of the masses. Or to, put, uh, to bring in some technicalities here, the orator versus the rhetorician. Rhetoric is the art of persuading people. Please understand, in the classic concept, the art of rhetoric is the art of persuading people. Whereas an orator tries to sweep people off their feet. And therefore, uh, as every textbook on the subject will tell you, uh, an orator tends to depend or uh, to bank more on emotionalism than on intellectual persuasion. Um, <clears throat> if you want to know more about this distinction, I would perhaps mention a title, a very small book, titled <coughs> The Crowd, written by a French author, his name was uh, Gustave Le Bon. Gustave Le Bon is a book that uh, uh, is a bit embarrassing to mention. It's a book that influenced Hitler. In fact, Adolf Hitler used that as his textbook on uh, uh, running propaganda. But he, that book has some interesting insights. <clears throat> so I was saying that uh, there is a clear distinction between the leader of the people and the leader of the masses. Uh, it's in vain that Rahul Gandhi tries to be the leader of the masses. He must, and there's no need for it either. If he tries to be the leader of the masses, he'll be an utter flop. He must be the leader of the people for which he's eminently suited. And in fact, I think the BJP, the Sang Parivar in general recognizes this. That's one of the reasons why the very name of Rahul Gandhi continues to make all these people intensely un uncomfortable intensely uncomfortable, which is, which is the greatest tribute that can be paid to Rahul Gandhi. Um, so this is a simple uh, suggestion. Rahul can make a big difference to the destiny of India, healthy difference to the destiny of India. If only he would follow the example of uh, Hercules, who directed the two rivers in order to clean the Augean stable of mountainously accumulated filth, and to render the society clean and livable. He, he also has two resources at his disposal. One is the Gandhian heritage, the other is the people power. What he has to do in the days ahead is to draw from these two resources in, and become in the process a leader of the people of India. 
a leader of the people of India. That should be the clear vision with which Rahul Gandhi shapes his participation in the destiny of India from this day onwards. Well, I thank all of you for being patient listeners to this process of searching, finding, and celebrating. Goodbye for the present.